that I didn't think much of myself. And so the world didn't think much of me. That lined up. You know, just one of those breakups that really, you know, it was like, a tough one for me for whatever reason. So it looks like Diddy's relationship with JLo was actually way more toxic than we thought because her mother, Guadalupe Rodriguez, just exposed some major evidence about how Diddy used to put his hands on JLo. This was also confirmed by Diddy's ex bodyguard, Gene Deal, who said he witnessed everything that Diddy was doing to Jennifer and how he would sometimes put her in situations to get into physical altercations with his side chicks. There have been speculations about Diddy treating J-Lo terribly while they were together. But nobody actually realized just how bad it was until her mom and Jean Deal came out with these details. All I can say is, Diddy is really a monster and he deserves every bit of what he's going through right now. The conversation about J-Lo and Diddy's relationship recently came up again after J-Lo released her documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told. She went into details about the time she was stuck in a toxic relationship with one of her ex who used to force her into doing some very unsavory things for his own pleasure. She said, being thrown around and manhandled like that is not fun. I've definitely been manhandled and a couple of other unsavory things. Rough, disrespectful. I'm glad that one's behind us. And to add up to all this mess, there's also been rumors from fans that people used to work for Diddy at the time that he and JLo were together. And they're claiming he used to cheat on her with both men and women, and would sometimes drag her by her hair. Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Gene Deal, revealed this a while ago, when he said Diddy would sometimes leave JLo in the house to go look for Kim Porter, so they could hook up. He said Diddy would get really jealous every time he would find Kim with somebody else, and would threaten them into leaving Kim alone. And he'll call, and Kim wouldn't answer, and if she was out, he would ask the babysitter, you know, do you know where she at? Well, she said she was gonna be here because she had Kristen at the time. You know what I mean? So now we go on where Kim is at. And if she was with somebody, he made it very uncomfortable for that person to be with. Using the bodyguard. And while Jennifer was upstairs, he was down there getting a the fillet from her. Did she ever find out? She know now. And you said the female name was Karen? Yeah, Superhead. Oh, okay, Karen Stephens. You gotta say the full name, man. Yeah, I thought it was her. Now, going back to the allegations about Diddy putting his hands on J-Lo, there was also a scene in her documentary where she and a man acted out a time in her life where her ex was being physically aggressive with her. When she was asked about the scene, she said, the idea of the glass house was about how we get into these toxic relationships. You have trauma from your past, you have these patterns you haven't figured out yet, and you get into these relationships where you compromise yourself in ways you never thought you would, or you allow people to treat you in ways that you never thought you would. And baby, she definitely was not lying when she said she allowed Diddy to treat her in ways she never thought she would because that's exactly what happened. He pretty much had full control of her. He saw JLo as nothing more than a product that he owned. And as if the constant physical and mental torture wasn't enough, he also dragged JLo into his legal issues when he made her help him cover up his crime. All that happened back on December 20th. 8th, 1999, when Diddy and J-Lo were at a club in New York to celebrate Shine's album release. But unfortunately, things got pretty dark later that night, after Diddy bumped into a man named Matthew Allen, who was popular for his street name Scar, and accidentally spilled his entire drink all over him. Now, although this was an accident, the man was not having it, and he started talking to Diddy a little reckless. Quote, the conflict escalated, and rounds went off, one allegedly coming from Puffy's Three of the club's patrons were injured. One woman was shot in the face. JLo and Diddy sped away in a 1999 Lincoln Navigator, but ran a red light and were pulled over by police. They were in possession of a stolen you-know-what, which was found in the trunk. They were arrested and spent the next 14 hours in a jail cell, where JLo was reportedly crying unintelligibly and sobbing uncontrollably. The charges were eventually dropped for the both of them, but their relationship started going 
south at that point. Interestingly enough, Shine took the fall for Diddy's BS and ended up in jail for nine years. People speculate that he paid Shine a hefty sum of money to take the fall for the crime he committed, and Shine, being naive and desperate for some cash, agreed to it and wasted nearly a decade of his life away in jail. JLo eventually broke up with Diddy in 2001 and became a free woman again. But get this, just a year after the breakup, she released a movie about a woman who was caught up in a DV relationship and finally runs away from her husband. A lot of people believe this film was inspired by JLo's relationship with Diddy and how she eventually survived it. In fact, during the filming of this movie, it got so intense for her that she had multiple mental breakdowns. I did have a kind of nervous breakdown. I froze up on set. Well, not on set, but in my trailer. I was like, I don't want to move. I don't want to talk. I don't want to do anything. It was on that movie. Enough. Yeah, I did. I had a nervous breakdown. And do y'all remember the woman he hit in the face? Well, she recently got on TikTok after all these years and confirmed that Diddy was the one who committed the crime, not Shine. I am the woman who he sh in the face in that 1999, December 27th, 1999, Club New York. I have told everyone ad nauseum since then, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the bullet, I got in my face with a nine millimeter, excuse me, nine millimeter hollow point bullet called a cop killer. I literally have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got pow pow in the face. I watched him fire. The I've said it all this time. But just when we thought we were wrapping all this up, Gene Deal recently appeared in another interview where he gave us more details about the torture that Diddy put JLo through. We would come back to the studio and it'd be a bunch of girls in the studio. And he would try to convince her that because he's a superstar, he has to have a lot of girls around like that for his image. But Ms. Lopez has been around the block a few times. You know, she's been on major networks, you know, stars, dealt with individuals and like that. So, you know, what I didn't like is that they used to tag team her on 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 on, on discussion about these girls and stuff that used to be around. They used to be disrespectful, and they would try to be disrespectful to her. And I would be put in the middle of that bullshit sometimes, and then she'd be looking at me like, "Yo, Gene," when in fact. I can't do anything because he's my principal. You understand what I'm saying? According to Jean, Diddy would usually bring a bunch of girls over to his studio while JLo was there, so he can make her jealous and bait her into fighting with these girls. From your point of view, right, did you see any signs that Diddy and JLo was going to break up? From your point of view, did you see the writing on the wall? Well, when, when I saw a lot of people a lot of investigators following us, you know, I knew they were private eyes because I worked for a private eye company at that time also. That was a lead investigation on 29th Street between, what was that, 10th, 10th and 11th Avenue. It was on 29th Street, elite investigation. So you know a lot of the private eyes, different private eye companies, you work with them on different of, with of, different other clients. One time we had Sharon Stone. So I knew a lot of the guys and I saw a couple of guys who worked a couple of jobs with me before watching us. Gene said the torture from Diddy got so bad that JLo's manager hired a private investigator to secretly follow him around so he can collect evidence of Diddy putting his hands on her. People believe that the evidence that the private detective collected is what JLo used to free herself from that toxic relationship. So I know a couple of guys that were watching us. So I was trying to tell Paul, yo, you know, we got PIs following us. You know what I'm saying? So. It was only certain reasons if they was following us, if they was PIs, somebody 
was trying to find out something on us. And it usually be, they will usually be following us, not when we're going to a big party and stuff like that. They'll just be following me and puff, puff on our, on our days that we were out and about and we were going certain places. So either somebody hired private eyes to follow us on behalf of Jennifer Lopez or she did. But why do you think her and her team would do that? Somebody hired private eyes to follow us. It could have been her manager, Benny Medina. He didn't like Puff. You understand? So I, I could tell when, in the first meeting when I was around him and Puff, when I was in the first meeting with around him and Puff, we was in this meeting, and I could tell how he was talking to Puff. You know what I'm saying? That he didn't so much care for Puff. So anything to get Jennifer away from him, I think he was capable and ready to do it. Gene also said that JLo's mom really hated Diddy because of the way that he treated Jennifer. At the time, people speculated that Guadalupe didn't like Diddy because he was black. But after everything we know now about Diddy, it seems like there was way more hatred towards him than it had anything to do with his race. He was violating her daughter every day. And just like any other mom, she was not happy about it. And you said JLo's mom didn't like Puffita, right? She his, his mom couldn't stand. Mom never took a present, a gift. If 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 she, if, if she needed air to breathe, she wouldn't take his last breath. Now, as usual, people had their own thoughts about this, like this person who said Jaguar Wright said J Lo was in an abusive relationship too. If he his mom and all the other women he dated, like Kim, Cassie, and etc., you know he probably did it to J-Lo too. He doesn't matter if they black, brown, or green. Another person said, did he put his hands on her and everyone else he dated? Benny Medina and J-Lo's mom saved her life from Puff. I just hope she didn't put the f in her bag and gave it to Diddy in the club to that person. But now I want to know your thoughts. What do y'all think about JLo's mom despising Diddy? And do y'all think Diddy's torturing Jennifer led to her mom not liking him? Y'all been knew what to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video.